Sarita, Professor, Department of Computer Science, College of Engineering, Gindi, Anna University. Her special interest, Artificial Intelligence and Natural Language. She has published more than 143 articles in national and international journals. She has guided around 7 PhD students. She has got Young Scientist Award from Government of Tamil Nadu in the year 2000, Chief Minister's Special Mention Award in the year 2002 and Woman of Excellence by Rotary Club in the year 2003. Welcome to the UGC lecture series. In this lecture, we are going to talk about some uh, advanced uh, databases. Of course, the advances come maybe because of the data and maybe because you need special techniques to tackle such type of data. So, in this, we are not going to cover all types of advanced databases, but we are just going to touch upon what is distributed databases, what is mobile databases, what is the concept of multimedia databases and very important one uh, application is the uh, geographic information system applications, how we use. So, let us first look at distributed databases. A distri what is a distributed database? It consists of loosely coupled sites that share no physical components. So, you have loosely coupled sites which store the data and databases run on each site ir uh, independent of the other. But transaction may access data at one or the more sites. Now, the, what is the problem here? The problem here is that it may lead to some problems. Remember our acid condition that we are talking about in databases. So, in a home engineer is distributed database, all sites will have identical software. All are aware of each other and agree to cooperate in processing user requests. Each site surrenders part of its autonomy in terms of right to change schemas or software. And as far as the user is concerned, it looks as a single system. And in a heterogeneous databases, different sites may use different schemas and software. Difference in schema is a major problem for query processing. This is very, very important. And difference in software is a major problem for transaction processing. So, look at two very important concepts of databases, query processing and transaction processing. So, schema change, if different uh, people uh, sites have different schemas, then query processing becomes different. If they use different software, then transaction processing become different. So, sites may not be aware of each other and may provide only limited facilities for cooperation. So, one important aspect of this is the data replication. So, a, a relation or fragment of a relation is replicated if it is stored redundantly in two or more sites. So, what happens a database itself, the complete database can be stored in two sites or a fragment or a particular relation alone will be stored uh, replicated in redundantly. Redundantly means it will be in more than one place. Full replication of a relation is the case where the relation is stored in all the sites. And fully redundant databases are those in which every site contains a copy of the entire database, but this is not necessary. So, what is the advantage of replication availability? Failure of a site containing relation R does not result in unavailability because it is available as a replica in another site. Parallelism uh, queries on R may be processed in several, uh, several uh, sites in parallel and uh, relation R is available locally at each site. So, there is no need to transfer data from one site to another. So, this is the advantages of replication. Now, let us come to the disadvantages. So, increased cost of updates. Why? Every site has a replica. So, if you do one update in one place, all places it has to be updated. And uh, concurrency control is very, very co complex. We have discussed this complexity when we were talking about the concurrency control. Concurrent uh, updates to distinct uh, replicas may lead to inconsistent data under special concurrency control mechanism have been implemented which we have discussed. One solution is you choose one copy as a primary copy and apply concurrency control operations only on this primary copy. So, anyone wants to use that um, copy, I mean that part of the database, he will take it from the primary primary copy all the time. So, you make change only in one primary copy, but the problem that you face is the number of um, you know um, data transfers you have to do. Now, let us look at one very important concept of data uh, distributed databases which is called as data fragmentation. Revision of relation R into fragments R1, R2, Rn which contain sufficient information to reconstruct the relation R. If you take a, a relation, you uh, what is fragmentation we are talking? Given a relation, remember the relation is nothing but a table, you divide it into fragments, how we will see later, you divide it into fragments and at the same time when you combine these two, you should, you should be able to combine this. One type of fragmentation is what is called as horizontal fragmentation. Horizontal means like this. So, each tuple of R is assigned to one or more fragments. So, suppose you have say 1000 uh, tuples, say uh, you can put uh, 250 in one side, 250 in another side, 250, in, but it will contain all the attributes. So, this is a horizontal fragmentation. 
the next type of fragmentation is what is called vertical fragmentation. Here what you do is the schema itself you know that is the suppose it has 15 attributes then say 5 attribute in 1, 5, 16 attributes 4 in 1, 4 in 1 it need not be 4, 4 it can be any uh, number. So, you just uh, put the uh, fragment it like that it is uh, so, so several smaller schemas all schema must contain a common candidate key this is uh, this is very important otherwise you will have you will not ensure the lossless joint property. Uh, a special attribute tuple id attribute may be added to each schema to serve as candidate key. So, this is one way of dealing with this. For example, if you take relation account with the following schema account number branch name and balance. So, suppose you have um, horizontal fragmentation of account relationship this is the complete account you can have two now in two sides account 1 is equal to branch name is equal to Chennai account and account 2 is select branch name is equal to Madurai from account. So, this way uh, you have uh, one side containing 3 and another side containing 3, but you, you should know how you are split it so that you can rejoin it later. Vertical fragmentation you can fragment it this way remember you had uh, account number branch name and balance. So, here you can have branch name customer name and tuple id and you can have account number balance and tuple id. So, this is deposit 1 and this is deposit 2 this is a vertical fragmentation of the employee information relation. So, this is a uh, one way of doing this. So, advantage is horizontal it allows parallel processing on fragments of the relation. So, it allows the relation to be split. So, the tuples are located where they are most frequently associated. So, suppose I am talking about uh, some tuples in Chennai then it will be available in the Chennai bank Chennai sites. So, that that means it will be locally uh, processed vertical it allows tuples to be split. So, that each part of the tuple is stored where it is most frequently accessed tuple id attribute allows efficient joining. So, this is for vertical vertical and horizontal you can mix the two also. So, fragments may be successively fragmented and to an arbitrary depth. Uh, depth replication fragmentation can be combined also relation is partitioned into several fragments system maintains several distinct replicas of each fragment that is also possible. For example, 1000 again I split it into 250, 250, 250 and two 250s I can maintain on one side. So, all this is possible. We have looked at what is replication we have looked at what is fragmentation there are two types of fragmentation horizontal fragmentation and vertical fragmentation. Now, we are going to look at the next uh, concept called as data transparency. So, data transparency means degree to which the system user the user may be remain unaware of the details of how and where the data items are stored in a distributed system. So, as far as the user is concerned he does not know where the data is ok. So, what degree that he does not have to know that is what is called as data transparency consider there are many issues where transparency can be related to fragmentation uh, transparency replication transparency and location transparency. So, these are the three transparencies obviously from the names fragmentation transparency means you do not know how the data is uh, fragmented. Uh, for example, you ask a query with a with a attribute in the vertical uh, fragment which is not available on your site, but you do not know anything it will go take the data from whichever site it is available. So, this site has to know where it is available and then it will bring it and give it to you. So, as far as you are concerned as a user is concerned you do not know what is the fragmentation. Replication and transparency again uh, the data has been depleted in two or three places, but the user should not feel a reduce in speed because this has to be updated in three places. Location transparency my data may be sitting in somewhere in a US uh, site does not matter as far as I am concerned it will give me the result. So, that is how much you are able to maintain that. So, naming of data items is a criteria for data transparency. So, every data item must have a system wide unique name because otherwise uh, there will be duplication it should be possible to find the location of the data items that I am storing efficiently. So, uh, given the unique uh, system wide unique name depending on that where it is it should be able to find in a efficiently it should be possible to change the location transparently. So, if I am changing the location from Chennai to Bombay no one should know it only the system each site should be able to create new data items autonomously. So, to create a new data item my site should not have to wait for this people this people this people as far I'm a, as I am a concern I must be able to create the new data. We will go to that important said we have to have a system wide unique name. So, that is called as centralized scheme called as name server. So, the name server uh, assigns all names each site maintains a record of local data items local data items alone it maintains sites ask the name server to locate non local data items. So, the sites will maintain its own local data items for other data items where will it go it will go to the name server it will provide it. So, this is a centralized scheme advantages it satisfies these three criteria every data item must have yes should be possible to find the location yes it should be possible to change the location. But 
uh, disadvantage it does not satisfy the naming criterion of 4 which is to create new data items. Name server is a potential performance break because everyone is going to contact the name server and also obviously a single point failure. So, you have what is called as aliases. Uh, alternative to the centralized scheme, each site prefixes its own site identifier to any name that it generates. For example, site 17 dot account fulfills having unique identifier because in its site it has only these data in unique data. So, for that for that site name it will give 17 and avoids problem of uh, central control. Now, but the user knows this is in 17, this is in 18. So, there is no transparency. So, instead of that what you do you create a set of aliases for data items store the mapping of alliance to the real names at each site. You do not say Chennai dot so that the, um, the user knows it is in Chennai instead of putting Chennai you put some alias name and in the alias name with the actual name or location is stored somewhere. So, here what you achieve is you achieve that uh, user transparency without sacrificing on having a centralized scheme. User can be unaware of the physical location of the data item and is unaffected if the data item is moved from one site to another. Previously, if the data item is moved from site 1 to site 2, you have to change that term. here, you have to change the, the user becomes the thing. Here, it will have the same name, only thing is the mapping will be changed. Next, when I talk about distributed databases, let us talk about distributed transaction. So, transaction may access data at several sites and each site has a local transaction manager who is responsible for maintaining the log for recovery purpose. We have seen all this before and participate in coordinating the concurrent execution of the transaction executing at that site. So, each site has a transaction coordinator which is responsible for starting the execution of transaction that originated that site and if there is a necessity this is important distributed database distributing the sub transaction at appropriate sites for execution and after the transaction is uh, terminated and if it has been originated in this site and the result has to be committed at all sites or aborted at all sites all this is the responsibility of the transaction coordinator. So, that is as far as uh, distributed databases is concerned uh, a brief overview. Now, let us go to the next topic which is mobile databases. Now, mobile databases uh, this is because of the recent advances of portable and wireless technology. This has led to mobile computing a new dimension in data communication and processing. So, it allows client to access data from virtually anywhere at any time. Some of the issues which may involve data management, transaction management database have similar to distributed database system. So, we are not going to look at that. But um, some specific characteristics of mobile computing characteristics are one is that when we are talking about site and distributed database, we are not bothered about the connectivity. So, the limited and intermittent connectivity offered by wireless communication. So, this leads to communication latency and intermittent uh, connectivity and also there is a limit to the power supply. So, the changing topology of the network that is as the user is moving the topology changes. So, these are some characteristics of mobile databases. So, general computing uh, will be like this you have a high fi this is the wireless cell and so on. So, you have mobile units and you have the databases connected to each of these places. So, client mobility also poses many data management challenges servers must keep track of where the uh, locations are and efficiently route messages to them. So, client data should be stored in the network location and minimizes traffic. Now, the act of moving between cells must be transparent to the client, he should not know. The server must be able to gracefully divert the shipment of data from one base to another without the client noticing. So, here additional is that base, uh, base uh, shipment and uh, client mobility also allows new applications that are location based. So, this is a typical example, I have a database of all the hotels and uh, what it is Chinese or whatever it is and according to that uh, mobile databases depending upon where I am now say for example, I am in Adair now you have a GPS which will give me the location depending on the location automatically it should give only the restaurants that are placed in Adair. Suppose I am in uh, Mount Road it should give those. So, from a database management uh, viewpoint you have uh, some issues that are uh, connected with mobile uh, databases which we will see after the break. Now, let us take a short break. Welcome back after the break. Before the break, we were talking about mobile databases uh, and mobile computing characteristics. Now, let us look at how that characteristics affect database management. From a database management standpoint, mobile computing may be considered as a variation of distributed computing. Uh, mobile databases can be distributed under two possible scenarios. The entire database is distributed mainly among the wired component, possibly with a full or partial replication. 
So, a base station a fixed host manages its own database with the DBMS like functionality with additional functionality for locating mobile units and additional query and transaction management features to meet the requirements of the mobile environment. Here the base station acts as a site uh, like in distributed database, but additional functionality it has to do. The second is the database is distributed among both the wired and the wireless components. Data management responsibility is shared among base station of fixed host and the mobile units. So, the issues here for uh, mobile databases, data distribution and replication is an uh, issue, transaction models for this is an issue, query processing, recovery and fault tolerance, mobile database design, how do you design it, location based service very important, division of labor, can I give the query to many people to solve it, security is an issue. So, these are all lot of research is going on in mobile databases and some of these are trying to be solved. So, let us take an application and intermittently synchronized databases. One thing I forgot to tell you is for mo mobile databases when you talk about how the query is processed the quickness of because the power connection is there. So, I am not very bothered that I should get all the results I need to get the minimum of so many results. So, these are some issues that are considered when you are talking about mobile databases. Now, let us look at an example whenever uh, clients connect through a process known in industry as synchronization of a client with a server they receive a batch of updates to be installed in their local databases. The primary characteristic of this scenario is that the clients are mostly disconnected the server is not necessarily able to reach them. This environment has problems similar to those of distributed and client server, uh, server databases and some from mobile databases. This environment is referred to as intermediately synchronized database environment ISDBE. So, the characteristics of this ISDBEs are make them distinct from mobile databases. A client connects to a server when it wants to exchange updates. The communication can be unicast one to one communication between the server and the client or multi class one sender or server may periodically communicate to a set of receivers or update a group of clients. A server but on the other hand cannot connect to a client at will. So, the issues of wireless versus wired connections and power conservation are generally immaterial. Client is free to manage its own data and transaction while it is disconnected. It can also perform its own recovery to some extent. Now, a client is multiple ways of connecting to a server. In case of many servers may choose a particular server against some other server based on proximity, communication and so on. So, in that case how do you manage, how do you maintain the replication this is very important. The next type of databases that we are going to look at is what is called as multimedia databases. Here up to now that is we looked at distributed and mobile databases. Now, here the data is basically the same data only thing is there it is distributed in distributed database in mobile databases it is distributed base stations are there mobile units are there and so on and power is an important criteria location base become a very important criteria. In multiple multimedia databases the data itself is different. So, multimedia information system are starting to dominate our uh, daily lives our houses will be wired for man bandwidth to handle interactive multimedia applications. Our high definition TV computer workstation will have access to a large number of databases including digital libraries, image and video databases is very common today that will distribute a vast amounts of multi source multimedia content. Multimedia comes from different sources that will be distributed. So, DBMS have constantly been adding to the types of data they support. Today the following types are of multimedia you can support are normally supported one is text this again may be formatted or unformatted for ease of passing standards like CGML or variations of HTML are being used. Graphics examples include drawings and illustrations that are encoded using some descriptive standards CGM picked so on. Then you have images this you will understand images are very common includes drawings photographs and so forth encoded in standard formats such as bitmap JPEG and MPEG. Compression is already built into the standard formats itself these images are not subdivided into components hence querying them by content find all images containing circles is non trivial as of now it is not possible. Animation temporal sequences of image or graphic data this is another uh, type of data that multimedia database is stored. Very important one is the video a set of temporally sequenced photographic data for presentation at specific rates for example, 30 frames per second movie is a typical example structured audio sequence of audio components comprising of note tone duration and so forth audio sample data generated for example, movie songs. So, these are typical data available in a multiple multimedia database. So, composite or mixed multimedia data a combination of multimedia data types such as audio and video which may be physically mixed to yield a new storage format or logically mixed while retaining original types. So, this is very important this composite data how would this information is rendered real time is important and uh, the sequence is important lot of issues are there in multimedia. 
So, again this is an open research area. So, uh, depends on the nature of multimedia applications, multimedia data may be stored, delivered and utilized in many different ways. Application may be uh, categorized based on the data ma management characteristic. For example, you have what is called a repository applications, a large amount of multimedia data as well as metadata is stored for retrieval. Examples include satellite images, engineering, drawing and design, space photographs, radio scan. These, what do you mean by this is repository means the data is not changed very often. Then you have what is called as presentation applications, a large amount of application involved delivery of the multimedia data. This is a very, very important area of research today. So, it is subject to temporal constraints. A simple multimedia viewing of video data for example, requires a system to simulate VCR like functionality because it should not come in any order, it should be synchronized and so on. Complex and interactive multimedia presentation involve orchestration directions to control the retrieval order of the components in a series or in parallel. So, the order in which the data components, so suppose I have 10 frames and they are all stored separately, the 10 frames have to come in a particular order, otherwise it is stuck, it would not be, mm. you cannot present it. So, interactive en environments must support capabilities such as real time editing analysis or annotation also. You have another topic under this which is called as collaborative work using multimedia information. This is a new category of application is said that by the year 2020 collaborative work environment is going to become the thing and there is no question of uh, working uh, separately and it will be a global way in which people will work in which engineers may execute a complex design task by merging drawings, fitting subjects to design constraints and generating new documentation, changing notifications and so forth, which will be done by different people across the globe simultaneously. So, intelligent healthcare networks as well as telemedicine will involve do doctors collaborating among themselves, analyzing multimedia patient data for example, scan data so on and information and this has to be done in real time because the operation may be performed in one place, the data may be available in another place and so on. So, multimedia applications dealing with thousands of images, documents, audio and video segments and free text data. This depend critically on appropriate modeling of the structure. So, this modeling becomes very important and designing the database schema for storing and retrieving such information. So, multimedia information system are very complex and embrace a large set of issues. One is how do you store the data? How is the complex data model? And how do you logically and physically design of multimedia? This has not been addressed fully even up to now. So, storage multimedia data on uh, standard disk like devices present problems of representation, compression, mapping and so on. Database way of retrieving information is based on query languages and internal index structures. Here we may have to give query as a small picture and then according to that I have to take. So, there are lot of issues in multimedia which are still open. So, multimedia applications involving only documents and text performance constraints are subjectively determined by the user. And video playback, audio video synchronization, all these are very, very important issues when you are talking about how the transactions are handled. So, let us look at some database applications. So, large scale applications of multimedia database can be expected and this is very much becoming true because of the internet scenario. So, documents and records management, knowledge dissemination, education and training, marketing, advertising, retailing, entertainment and travel real time control and monitoring all these are applications where multimedia is going to be used in a very big way. So, documents and records management here you have records and uh, documents it can be even signed documents. So, it can be scanned copies the documents can be images. Now, as of now uh, the difference between image database and uh, uh, actual image database and a normal database is if you store the image as an image then it becomes just a data that is there. You cannot query based on that, but if you can query then it becomes content based image. So, education and training these are all places where multimedia database is going to come. The final set of uh, applications that we are going to look at is what is called as GIS applications, geographic information are used to collect model and analyze information describing physical properties of the geographical world. Two types of data are normally there, one is spatial data, this is typically in a remote sensing uh, station or so on. So, originating from maps, digital images, administrative and political boundaries, roads, transportation networks, physical data such as rivers, soil characteristics, climatic regions, land elevation, all this together is the spatial data. And then you have non-spatial data such as socio-economic data like census counts, economic data, sales and marketing information. So, this GIS is a rapidly developing domain that offers highly innovative approaches to meet some challenging technical demands. So, when you talk of GIS application, there are three types of categories of application. One is cartographic, this is based on the map, digital terrain modeling and application, soil conditions, river and so on and geographic object applications. 
So, if you look at this application you can divide it. So, cartographic irrigation, crop yield analysis, land evaluation, planning and facilities management, landscape studies, traffic pattern analysis these are all based on the space more or less digital terrain, earth science, civil engineering, soil surveys, uh, air and water pollution studies, flood control, water resource management. Here you talk about geographic objects application, car navigation system, geographic market analysis. So, how do you market your product depending upon the geography, utilities, distribution, consumption, co consumer product and services. So, for example, traffic pattern and car navigation system can go hand in hand. So, now what are the database requirements for a GIS or a geographic information system? The functional requirements of GIS application translate into the following database requirements. Data modeling and representation GIS can be broadly classified into two formats. One is vector data represents geometric objects such as points, lines and polygons and uh, raster data you have two types of data vector data and raster data. So, raster data is characterized as an array of points where each point represents the value of an attribute for a real world location. Informally raster images are n dimensional array and each entry is a unit of the image and represents an attribute. So, two dimensional units are called pixels as we already know you can have three dimension which are called as voxels and uh, three dimensional elevation data is stored in a raster based digital elevation model a particular format just like you have for image jpeg and so on this particular three dimensional is stored in what is called as dem format. So, what we are trying to say is data management uh, system has to handle the both the vector and the raster data and it has to do the following types of analysis. For example, in applications such as soil analysis, erosion analysis, environment impact studies or hierarchical runoff simulations data may undergo various types of geomorphometric analysis measurements such as slope values, um, aspect the compass direction, profile convexity, rate of change of gradient, plan convexity and so on. So, data integration GIS must integrate both vector and raster data from a variety of sources. Sometimes edges and regions are inferred from a raster image to form a vector model or conversely raster images such as aerial photographs are used to update vector models. So, all this has to be taken care of uh, by databases. So, data capture is another important point the first step in developing a spatial database is to capture the information. So, when you are capturing the information you can capture it from satellites and they provide a particular format you will have to put it in a standard format. So, GI implication are conducted through the use of special operators. Now, look at this the operators that we are using on GIS is completely different from a database operation interpolation, interpretation, proximity, raster image processing and analysis of networks. The functionality of GIS is also subject to extendability, data quality and visualization. Visualization is a very important aspect of GIS. So, all this has to be considered into the database. Spatial queries are very important. So, now suppose I have a database with only spatial information I am not able to ask spatial queries and it becomes an ordinary database with except that it has additional spatial data. Spatial queries is nearest queries request object that lie near a specific location. For example, I want to find all the buildings near Anna University nearest neighbor given a point find the nearest objects that satisfy some condition region queries ask the objects that lie partially or fully inside a specific region queries that compute interaction or unions and spatial joints. So, spatial queries have become very important handling spatial queries how to represent spatial information these are and it can combine spatial non spatial these are important aspects that uh, has to be handled by database there are extension to SQL to handle some of these very few of this. So, indexing has to be different. So, for example, KD tree is one which does the spatial type of indexing depending on if you index it like this it helps you to ask spatial queries that is the idea. So, here we explain the concept of distributed database gave an outline about mobile databases explain the concept of multimedia databases then explain how GIS application is actually a type of multimedia, but has specific requirements and lot of data is available. So, we discuss that also in detail. So, discuss with an example horizontal and vertical fragmentation and discuss the advantages of each discuss some typical issues associated with mobile environment and explain how these issues affect mobile databases and explain the type of data there are various type of data that can be handled with multimedia databases with examples and give an example and uh, the type of spatial queries that can be asked of a GIS system. So, thank you. Mm -hmm.